what I learned at ATD Technology 2015. Appreciate you spending your hour with us today. You are going to hear some of the most exciting, energetic, enlightening bits of information that were garnered at the ATD 2015 Tech Knowledge event. And you're going to hear from some great speakers. I'm your host, Sarah Hurst. I'm also the conference director of the ATD Technical Expo, which is in Houston April the 9th. Your moderator is Ken Kahn. He's virtual technology director. The speakers that you're going to be hearing today are Monika Savage from Obsidian, Linda Minji from ABS, Duncan Welder from Risk Inc., Debbie Richards from Creative Interactive Ideas, and Chad Udell, Float Learning. Now Chad is going to be our keynote speaker at the conference in April. So I know you'll enjoy hearing just a little bit of his information today and look forward to hearing more at a later date. The group who will be speaking today put this information together in the hopes that it would kind of whet your appetite about the latest technology trends that are out there. And not only the trends, but how do you apply them? How do you make them work in your business environment? They learned from the speakers. And not only that, they met with suppliers and vendors. And you and I both know that suppliers and vendors can be some of your best networking partners that you can ever come on. As I said, our ATD Houston Technology Expo is April the 9th. It's here in Houston at the, Houston, the City of Houston Learning and Development Center. You can get the information on the ATD website. Our keynote speaker, Chad Udell, from Manage, Managing Director of Float Mobile Learning. That's going to be such a great event. We have information for people just breaching the technology area, those in the intermediate group, and then those also that have had advanced knowledge. So I want you to listen very carefully today, and you'll hear some of the tidbits that will be discussed at our Technology Expo. We'd like to begin this afternoon by hearing from Monika Savage of Obsidian. Monika, take it away, please. Thank you. Hi, everyone. So as uh, Sarah uh, said, I am Monika Savage. Um, I'm the president of Obsidian. And Obsidian is a um, custom learning development company uh, based in Houston. We have successfully been in business for about 17 years. Uh, you'll see some of our folks here on the, on the slide. Uh, we're extremely passionate about uh, challenging the status quo in everything we do. So um, you know, we, um, we try to, to stay up to speed with all of the change in technology and um, apply it to the best that we can. And um, you know, you may want to follow us on Twitter or on our blog, and I, I honestly don't think you'll be disappointed. Um, we can moving on to um, talking about ATD technology. First of all, let me say I um, I thoroughly enjoyed um, the conference this year, and I really appreciate uh, ATD Houston for um, putting together this webinar and definitely inviting me to speak. Lots of uh, great talks, um, discussions on new tools. Um, you know, I loved a lot of the topics and talks there, um, including Chad's um, and Debbie's. And um, I loved getting my caricature done at Risk's booth. Um, so lots of fun. But um, since Sarah has asked us to stick to about uh, six minutes, of conversation. I can't talk the whole day about it. So I'm going to focus on um, some of the messages that um, I found um, extremely um, interesting and inspirational. Uh, one, of, one of the things that I love the most, uh, and I saw through multiple talks, starting with the first keynote with Aaron Dignan, was the theme of change and agility. And you know, we talk a lot about um, agile in terms of project management. But it definitely applies to learning design as well. So Aaron um, started talk, started um, discussing the responsive organization. 
not just um, learning design, but really uh, more of a high-level look at the business. The message can be applied everywhere, though. You know, so we know the world right now is a lot faster, right? The complexity is huge, volatility is crazy. What we planned last year may not work this year. So, what are we to do as as organizations in this world? And Aaron suggests that we can definitely start by saying, I don't know. Um, I personally love that because I always believe that there is wisdom in not knowing. Uh, it makes you step back and allows you to um, see really what the challenge is to bring in people that um, can find answers to um, repurpose some of the things that are existing. Um, so, you know, from TV, we've learned recently that orange is the new black. It seems that for organizations, uncertainty is the new black. The next uh, big message in, in his talk was adaptability, adaptability right? Um, since we're changing, we have to adapt to that change. And we can't do the things the same way we have always done them. Um, we also cannot invent something new every time we have a challenge. So we have to lean into the existing platforms, the networks. And one of uh, the very interesting pieces in his talk, we have to learn from the natural systems how to be adaptive. Um, one of the great analogies he used is learn from the ants. Um, Ants are not differentiated by job when you really look at their world. The queen doesn't give orders, you know, which begs the question, what about the CEOs of today? But ants organize based on chaos, and they follow simple rules. When information is low, when they, they don't have a lot of information, um, they rely on more experimentation, so research increases. When the information is rich, then we have more alignment, and everybody pretty much flows into the same uh, direction. So I, I find this um, analogy really interesting, and I try as a president of a company to apply it in, in our work. Um, the next message is purpose. You know, the certain, safe, um, bottom-line-driven world of, you know, a few years ago, focuses on the profit. The uncertain world of today really has to focus on purpose. If you have purpose, you create this emergence. And it's extremely important to the business and also to development of new technologies and application of new tools to um, today's challenges. So I, I love um, that last message um, you see on the slide, adapt, you know, have purpose Trust the people that you work with and the information that you already know and empower employees, empower your clients, empower your um, designers. And um, moving on, I found this um, message in several other talks. Um, for example, Jennifer Bertram. Um, from Bottom Line Performance talked about the Agile design, again, as an as a, uh, application of the Agile project management concept to learning design. And one of the things that I um, found very interesting is the concept of planning. We rely a lot on planning, but we don't always realize that the plan is really created the first day of the project which is the day you know the least about the project. So in, in a sense, the plan is really fictional the moment you um, create it. Um, and unless you move with the content, you listen to the changing needs, and you ask for feedback, your plan is going to become obsolete. And we see that, I know, uh, for us as, as a learning development organization, we see that in every project. We may start with a set of uh, data, but we gain a lot more knowledge through the project, and we have to adapt and we have to change. 
um, Dara Thompson from Intrepid Learning brings that change concept to blended learning. And she basically asks us to think about the learning offering as a menu. Um, it's sort of a fun concept, but think about you as the instructional designer or the learning designer as a chef um, at a restaurant. You know, you have to think about who's going to consume that learning, um, what do they like, the impact of the brain science that we keep hearing a lot. Um, we have to offer variety. You have to think healthy portion size, which in terms of content means the same thing as eating. Small is better. Uh, you have to eat more than three times a day, smaller portion meals. So, um, you know, thinking about your learning offering in, in that sense makes it easier to design for the social world, for the mobile world, um, for, again, this continuously changing world. And I know I'm getting close to, to the end here, so my own mes message for um, everyone that's passionate about learning, it's on the same line. Change with the times, but keep building on the existing stuff. Don't throw away things just because they're old. Adapt them. So that's um, back to you, Sarah, or to questions, if there are any. Um, Monique, I really appreciate the idea of ants and then also the buffet table. You know, you can't have food without ants. <laughs> so what a great picture. What a great picture of us to learn the ants being perhaps us that are in the workforce and the picnic table, our customers and other employees that we serve. So looks like you really garnered some great information at the conference. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's go to uh, Linda Minji. Linda? Tell us what you learned. Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for having me today to speak. Um, there's so much to talk about, it's hard to impact it in just a few minutes. Uh, it was really the first time that I had went to a conference. I had went to one in New Orleans for two days about M-learning, a little bit about mobile learning with Sarah Gilbert. But it was really big to go to Las Vegas and interact with people uh, that are all in our training and development organization. But the three highlights I'd like to share is my first few days I took a mobile learning course from Carla Tarkinson. And she went through the whole design process, understanding details and uh, how to create a prototype and mobile website. And American Bureau of Shipping, when I first started working for them a year ago, they said, we're not going to be doing mobile for three to five years. And I said, wow, we're going to really be behind if we wait three or five years. And our surveyors are getting tablets this year, so we're forced to go mobile because they're going to be using their tablets out in the field while they're surveying uh, ships. And so I got a lot of uh, knowledge from taking the class from Carla. We talked about the outline, uh, site map, uh, how to do your sketchings. Uh, she had shown us a, a few things, how to get through our design process and went on through the whole process with the wireframe and mock-ups and prototypes. But what I love about her whole class is that we focus mainly on apps and M-learning, little chunks of information for our learners. And, you know, a lot of our guys that work for ABS, they're out on these vessels uh, and out on rigs uh, surveying ships. They really don't can't take a big laptop, you know, they're not behind a desk, you know, 80% of the workforce is behind a desk, but there's 20% that's truly mobile and it continues to grow uh, with, you know, field workers, our sales reps are using them. And so she really gave us a lot of knowledge on uh, how to present that in mobile without overloading our learner. And it leads right into uh, the next highlight of the conference, and that was listening to Chad Udell. <laughs> he has really, his insight, listening to him speak, was one of the highlights of the, the conference. I got to meet him after listening to him speak. Uh, 
I'm on his second book. I read his book, Learning Everywhere, and I had, le had read it before I went to the con conference, and it talks about, you know, transforming it, your training into mobile. Uh, what I like about Chad, he's so detailed when he talks about mobile learning, and he creates solutions, and it led to my presentation. I had to give my presentation when I got back from the conference to my company that sent me, and I love the way that Chad talks about the six P's in his book. It's in Chapter 6 of his Mastery Mobile Learning. And he gives you a lot of insight how the first thing we talk about is platform. <laughs> and we have surveyors that are going to be using service tablets, but then we have salespeople that are using iPads. And in that chapter, he talks about a CEO having an iPad and how everybody else has a BlackBerry. So when you're really starting to have mobile learning, I mean, we're from the get-go at ABS. We are just now getting into it. And to know and read this book about best practices, you know, turning our concept into reality, uh, a lot of learning that we're going to do, be doing is our guys are out in the field. And I, I love his chapter 19 where he talks about the camera. And I used that last week. We went to... Uh, the Harvey Golf and did some filming on an LNG carrier, which is liquid and gas, one of the vessels that we survey. And what's nice is that you can take these little job aids and re research tools and create things that they're doing, like pre-cooling and bunkering. It's a great tool out in the field. So reading his books and getting an insight from what he tells us, I'm looking forward to him speaking as well on uh, April 9th. Uh, that was a, a big highlight uh, of my conference, uh, to learn a lot about mobile learning and uh, what all the steps it takes, you know, uh, between listening from Carla, how it goes to the design process, and into what you hear from Chad. It can really give you a lot of, uh, my presentation was so great with the six Ps because I followed the platforms, the policies. The, the procurements and, and the provisioning, the publishing, all the way to the publishing, what's going to happen. You know, a lot of us struggle with the publishing on our courses or our training and the procedures today. So uh, I'm glad he's speaking today. I can't wait to hear him in a little bit at the end of this webinar. Uh, and my last highlight, I have to say, is Tan Lee. Uh, I listened to all three key speakers, uh, but what Tan Lee is doing Listening to her personal story, coming over on a boat with her grandmother, her little sister, and her mother was just amazing. You know, seeing the rig lights and telling her story was so inspiring. But for someone to dedicate their life in a digital device that's going to respond to what we think, I mean, uh, this device that she comes up with is 16 sensors, and it listens to your activity from your entire brain. And... For us to be able to do that in the future, what the user's brain activity looks like when we jump or turn left. I mean, she had one lady come to the stage and have her focus on this flower, and they had the flower on the big screen. And the lady didn't touch the device. She just thought it with her mind with that device on her head. And it was amazing. She was able to open the flower with her brain. I was in awe after that. So. Uh, go to the conferences. They're networking with other people. It's so much fun, and it was just a, a fabulous week of learning. I can't talk about it enough. I picked up uh, little things about Storyline because that's what we use at ABS to create our, our online courses and just communicating with everybody in different training and development, what they're doing, what you're doing. So I had a wonderful time, and thank you again for having me today speak. Linda, that was awesome. I really appreciated the fact that you were able to utilize information immediately that you gathered at the conference. And then with Tan Lee's presentation, what a future we're going to have. And those of you that are involved in technology, you're just right there. They keep talking about cutting edge, cutting edge. Well, I'm, I don't think we're at the edge anymore. We're actually taking the first step. And so that was very exciting. I appreciate your information. Thank now you. we're going to hear from Duncan Welder. 
Hi, I appreciate you guys having me. This is Duncan Welder. <coughs> and I um, so really appreciate both Monique and, and Linda giving their experience at the conference. And it uh, instills some confidence in me because I look at that and say, gosh, we've had some very, very similar experiences there and some great, um, oh, great lessons to learn out of the, <coughs> out of the show. I mentioned I'm, uh, I work for Risk, or a learning management system provider here in Houston, but not here to talk about that today. Really wanted to highlight uh, three things that were my big takeaways from this conference. Um, and the first one of those, as we move on to that next slide, is really the evolving learning standards that are that are out there. Um, let's say just a ton of activity in this space. SCORM, I know a number of you are familiar with the shareable content object resource model that was uh, initiated out of the Department of Defense uh, ADL, Advanced Distributed Learning Initiative, um, several years ago, still alive and kicking, um, but certainly a mature and, and uh, stable standard. Right? The most recent update came out in, in 2009, if you think about the um, phone that you were using in 2009, whether it was a, a BlackBerry or it was one that you flipped open. Um, in the last six years, a lot of changes have happened you know, on that technology front, and, and SCORM just doesn't accommodate some of those um, mobile technologies and things. So in the meantime, what's happened is ADL has, has initiated another standard, this Experience API or XAPI, a lot of times you'll hear referred to as Project Tin Can, uh, to really help fill in some of those gaps um, in writing an activity stream of learning events back to a, a learning record store that's independent of, a, of an LMS. Um, and now that standard, as a matter of fact, has a working group uh, to see it adopted in the uh, IEEE, the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers. Um, at the same time, the a uh, AICC that you see on the screen there, the Aviation Industry Computer-Based Training Committee that, that really was driven very largely by Boeing and preceded SCORM, though again still in use, um, was working on a new standard when they disbanded at the end of 2014 and who would pick up their existing uh, standard, their standard in progress, but ADL now kind of making it the de facto new school. So a lot of interesting changes in this space, and I think it's, they're going to be more in the, in the near term. Um, now my fear is, and I recognize a little bit of it, that there's some confusion in the industry because of all these changes, but the fortunate side is I don't see anyone kind of resting and waiting for the dust to settle. I see a lot of groups out and really um, leveraging these these new technologies, these new standards, even as they're evolving uh, for very practical purposes. So the second thing I wanted to, to talk about really seeing at the show or taking away from the show were all these great practical uses of, of, of XAPI. So, you know, not to you know, point that, paint that picture of doom and gloom because we have all this, this um, uh, evolution of these standards. There's really this shining light of, of groups saying, gosh, I have a business need that I can um, really meet using some of these new standards and, and taking off and, and doing that. So there are lots of great sessions there, and I've left a full bibliography in this presentation, so there's links back to, to a lot of these presentations. But uh, Sean uh, Putnam with Intellectus gave an overview session on getting started with XAPI, but also had a great deal of discussion around um, uh, the portability of, of training records and being able to write um, activities to multiple learning record store. Megan Torrance with Torrance Learning um, gave a really fascinating presentation on a project that, that they had worked on where they used RFIDs that are attached to, uh, to children and then a iPad. So as they walked near a um, uh, display at the Ann Arbor Hands-On Museum, then the RFID would bring up the uh, uh, information on that tablet, on that iPad, about that particular exhibit and let people interact with that. And then they used XAPI to write those, uh, write those records back uh, and recommend additional learning activities. Um, 
Andy Whitaker and, and Tim Martin with, with Rustacy Software uh, very similarly really talked a lot in a couple different sessions on matching learning paths with performance. Um, Tim spoke about uh, Devro treatment centers and using a mobile evaluation for patient observations that, that they could then use for additional staff training or make recommendations on additional staff training. Um, Andy talked about things like embedding XAPI into, oh, say resources like um, operating manuals and procedures that could then be used to track how your students are interacting with those different resources and looking at how to make how to make those better. So a lot of exciting um, activity on this XAPI front. So there's a good bibliography there and, and I certainly encourage you to search the um, Technology site you know, using uh, just the, the term search there and you can find a lot of these presentations. The real key that I see between these guys is they follow two, two things. One is um, all of these groups that are using these are taking some kind of creative view to really leverage this technology to meet some kind of business need. And second, and I think this ties back to a lot of what uh, Monica mentioned earlier, is that it's not um, looking at taking this technology and adapting some kind of broad brush approach to a training intervention. It's really how do we uh, leverage these individual pieces to let um, to support learners um, kind of all, all the way through the process versus these more kind of one-off events, um, which really leads to that that last item. And being sensitive to the time, there I'll make sure it's my my brief one as well. But a lot of conversation or this show I found um, uh, that I, I enjoyed around being more learning ecosystem focused. Now, certainly not a a new term there, but in the trade show market, in this tools market, we see a lot of things. We, we focus very much on, on technology, online training, web-based delivery, social learning. Um, I think there's been some normalization, a lot more conversations in this last show about saying, let's make the tools really secondary and focus on you know, what a person needs to support around uh, him or her for, for making decisions on the job. A lot of that is moving away from those one-off uh, training interventions and going more to moving training and content and resources more in line with the workflow so that I have access to that information uh, when I need it uh, and where I need it versus nesting it away inside of what I think of as a traditional course. And, and there was a great presentation by David Kelly, actually there were three great presentations by David Kelly. One was very specific around learning ecosystems and, and some of the things you can do to support that natural, uh, I think it was organic kind of uh, development of, of a learning culture inside the organization there and then had a couple different presentations on things that were much more tool specific like using Twitter for um, uh, for learning there. So again, this is one of those that I think is another space that really warrants being watched um, over the next couple of years is how do we, now that we have all of this access to all of this information, how do we think about the needs of of our students what are all of the tools and processes that we need to put in place? Um, like Monique had mentioned there, you know, the right size portion um, in the right combination for them uh, and supporting them to make them successful, thinking about you know, who, those, who those consumers are of our content. And as a training professional, um, you know, how much of our job moves from creating content to really um, curating and helping connect people with that that content. So lots of other great takeaways um, at the show, social learning functions and next generation LMS kind of information and, and all that. So um, certainly one that I would encourage. This is that big reference section. Uh, if there's anything that I can uh, ever answer there, don't hesitate to, uh, to get in touch with me. And again, I appreciate uh, your time this, this afternoon. Thank you, Doug, and I really like the emphasis you made on practical, making it practical, because there are so many times we get these great visions or something new comes out and it's just really not going to work for us. So I, I really like the idea of going back to what's going to work and then how do we make it work, and practicality is a great way to start. Another thing to mention is you don't have to try to write all of these things down. 
at the end of the event, we will be sending out all of you that are online this presentation. So you'll be able to get all of this great information that Duncan has presented here for you as well as everyone else's. Well, I am happy now to introduce Debbie Richards. So Debbie, why don't you tell us what you learned at this event? Okay, great. Um, I'm happy to do that. First of all, I hope everybody can see my wonderful image that's on this page. Um, I got that by visiting the RISC booth. They had a caricature artist there, and I now have a, a fantastic image that I can use on all my social media. So thanks, Duncan. Um, so when I go to a conference, there's usually three different things that I'm looking for. First of all, I'm looking for the opportunity to network. And I was able to do that at this conference. And I actually, um, I'm surprised. I always meet people from Houston that I don't know. And I thought I knew everybody. So I met Linda at the conference. And there you see a picture of us. And we're at the e-learning booth. And that's the second that's the, um, that's the second thing that I try to do is go around to a conference, especially if they've got a good expo where you can visit and look at, um, look at different products and uh, talk to vendors face to face. Um, and, and so that's always a great experience. And then, of course, the third thing is, is the opportunity to learn about new things. Um, so Sarah, if you'll go ahead and go to my next slide. And sometimes there's just so much information that it can be overwhelming. And I want to make sure that you guys know about David Kelly, because David Kelly does back channels for most of the e-learning conferences. He works for e-learning guild, but he goes to all the conferences. And so for the ATD Technology Conference, he did an excellent back channel. And the back channel has links to presentations, to additional information, stuff that you may have missed. And I look at the back channel, even when I'm at the conference, for additional information, if I want to go talk to somebody, if I saw something on his page. But we're going to share the link to this so you can, you can get to it. But I would also look to David's page if there's an upcoming conference coming on and you can't get to it, just to have that information, because it's a great resource. Okay, Sarah, go ahead to the next slide. And then the other thing that I always do is I participate um, in Twitter. So at the conference, I was tweeting for ATD Houston. And I was also watching the tweets that were coming through. Um, and the hashtag for, for this conference was ATDDK because there's always some really good information. And sometimes people will have, there'll be a buzz about stuff that's going on. So, you know, or a good speaker. And if that speaker's presenting again, or if there's a vendor that's doing something that, that I really want to check out, I look to the Twitter feed and, and check that out. Um, this is a tweet that I did. I attended Monica's session on mobile. And the one thing that I thought that she said that was, was so important was she said, when going mobile, Test your content with real users in their environment with their devices. And I think she might have gotten this from, from uh, Chad's book. Um, I, I can't remember for sure, but uh, I felt like it was, a, it was one of those things that I wanted to make sure I repeated. But um, uh, if you can attend a conference, then you might check out the Twitter feed. And I'll be tweeting at the international conference uh, in May. And, and sending stuff back on the back channel. So um, you can look for that on, uh, during that conference as well. OK, Sarah, next slide. So I actually did go to some, conf some sessions. And this was one of my favorite sessions. This was a session by Cindy Huggins. And in, I'm very interested right now on, on in engagement in webinars and understanding how to do more things with Adobe Connect. So this session was on using layouts for virtual learning. And it was a hands-on exercise. So we were all sitting in front of computers. And we were actually able to, to look at what she was doing and to 
to see it. She was talking about setting up, setting up different layouts for things that you could use during your presentation. And she talked about breaking up your PowerPoint presentations into smaller sections and then interspersing those with polls and with uh, blackboard act, uh, black, whiteboard activities and other things to really engage the audience. But the one thing that was really cool about this was, go ahead, Sarah, go to the next page. In the middle of her presentation, the internet died. And here we are in a classroom looking at uh, information and the, and the internet dies. But she's a fantastic presenter, so of course she had handouts. So we were able to go through the handouts and talk about, what, um, about her topic and still go through and get enough out of the, the information. So um, I'd encourage you to go out. If you're interested in webinars or you're interested in Adobe Connect and specifically, uh, to go out to Cindy's website. She's got some really good handouts and some information. She's written a couple of books. And it's something that I think you would find very, very valuable. Okay, go ahead, Sarah. Um, and then I, again, just like uh, Linda, I loved Tan Lee's presentation. Um, and she did a TED Talk on that that, um, that that has gotten over 2 million views, lots of really information. She talks about the headset. It's actually, they've, I think they've got some pre-release versions for sale, and I've signed up to get one because I just think that that it's something that just kind of goes out there and and expands on the boundaries of what um, of what we'll be able to see. Okay, Sarah, go ahead. And so here are my resources, and again, we'll be putting these out for you out um, in in the presentation afterwards so that you can get them. My big takeaway is check out the back channels. If you can't go to a conference, that's another way for you to be there virtually. So you can either check out David Kelly's or go to the ATD Houston Twitter feed. And if one of us is at the conference, then we'll be chatting about it. And we'll also post the hashtags for the conferences, and you can go out and check those out. Um, so it's a way for you to be at the conference without physically being at the conference. So I encourage all of you to check those out as well. Thank you, Debbie. I appreciate the fact that your speaker not only was prepared technically, but pre prepared also just in case emergencies happen. And sometimes when we get involved in technology, we, we have a tendency to forget that there was a, a method before this technological madness. So now we have Mr. Chad Udell who is going to speak with us. Remember Chad is going to be our keynote speaker at the Houston Technology Conference April 9th. Chad, take it away please. Okay. Chad, are you here? Chad, we're not getting your audio if you're if you're on. Well, it appears that I, I had somehow become muted very quickly. Hopefully, uh, you guys can all hear me now. Is everything okay? Yes, thanks. All right, very good. Well, thank you, Sarah, very much. I do appreciate it. And uh, to the the previous speakers here who gave me some very kind mentions either attending my sessions or shout outs for my book. I do really appreciate it. Linda, it was a pleasure meeting you uh, at the book signing there. And thank you for your kind words. And Monica, thank you again for thank your you. continued support. And, and uh, uh, everybody really, uh, generally speaking, here uh, on the panel and um, at the event was just so welcoming. Uh, this was basically the release party, if you will, or the coming out party for Mastery Mobile Learning Tech Tips and Techniques for Success, which is an AATD press book co-published by Wiley came out in October. So the uh, Tech Knowledge Conference was really the first time that I was able to kind of take the book on the road and get a chance to meet a lot of people, talk about the topics in the book. Uh, I did have a presentation uh, one of the days where we gave a deep dive uh, on, the, on the book, um, basically going through uh, some of the bigger sections uh, in the book as well as some of the deeper uh, content like Linda mentioned with the six Ps. And uh, I guess I, I, need, I owe her a cookie for being able to properly recite all six of those Ps. That was really quite good, Linda. Thank you very much for that. Um, the event is a blast. 
uh, for anybody that's never been to ATD Technology but has maybe been to either uh, the the annual gathering, um, which this year is going to be in Orlando, or in the previous years it's been in DC and and uh, Dallas. Uh, technology is a smaller, more intimate event. You know, and by smaller I mean you know a couple thousand people as opposed to ten thousand people. So if you're new to the conference scene and you're very enamored or very interested in things like learning technologies, technology is a great place to start out because it's it's of a scale that you can approach it, make a pick list and actually hit the tracks and the speakers that you really want to see, um, but there's still plenty of networking that it can occur. Because it's in a fun place like Las Vegas, there's no shortage of great restaurants and places to go afterwards to continue the networking and, and fun far into the evening. So um, give uh, some, some significant props to ATD for putting on another stellar event there. That was really quite good. Um, beyond just the basic nuts and bolts of the conference. I mean, the keynote speakers, as as previously mentioned, were very, very exciting. Tanner Lee's uh, presentation with the uh, Emotive product line was so, so engaging and very exciting. Um, so much so that it basically, um, before we came back and I immediately ordered one of their products. I'm currently on the waiting list like Debbie is, but uh, the order has been placed, the credit card has been laid down, and I'm very, very excited about uh, getting that product in. Um, Beyond just the uh, featured speakers and things, some things that I think were some really amazing trends um, in the the event was the emerging technologies track. Uh, for those of you that don't know, um, uh, learning technology or technology is split up across about oh I don't know six or eight, maybe even more tracks. Everything from mobile and um, you know uh, authoring platforms and tools, games, simulations and such. But one of them. One of the tracks that, that uh, I had a special attention on was the Emerging Technologies track. And that's where they cover everything that Duncan had mentioned from experience API and measurement, but also some really advanced new technologies and techniques that are kind of a, uh, hit, now hitting the scene. Um, contextual learning, adaptive learning, designing for data, designing for big data, uh, or using big data in order to create personalized learning. And these are the types of things that while they not, aren't necessarily quite as applicable right now, uh, they definitely plot a very bold course for where we're going and allow us to, I think, start to plan for building a much richer user experience. I think all of us would probably uh, argue or, or certainly pose the fact, uh, the assertion that an engaging experience uh, when read-only is still only a, a read-only uh, experience. And if the user, if the, if the learner is truly not engaged, if they are not able to plot an active course, um, ultimately, it, it doesn't breed as successful results. And so these new uh, digital learning content development processes related to you know, designing with data, designing with adaptive learning, all of these um, are far more interesting, far more, um, what do I want to call it, uh, less, less chance of uh, learner burnout, I guess. Um, and they also plot the course to uh, plot the plan to move beyond that course. Um, I think we all would probably uh, say it's fair to, to, to state that we learn a lot when we're not in classes, when we're not in front of the computer screen. And adaptive learning, data-driven learning, all of these types of things um, rely on uh, more advanced technologies, but also more advanced thought about the content. And that was another thing I think that was very heartening as well as there was at least a handful of sessions on the docket related to uh, the importance of content strategy. And I've been banging that drum for quite some time, um, learning everywhere how mobile content strategies are transforming. Training came out in 2012, and I was writing on the importance of content strategy for about a year before that book even came out uh, on the Float Learning blog. So in 2015, to see a good handful of sessions uh, there, as well as some kind of hands-on um, sessions related to uh, creating content audits, um, leveraging content management systems, uh, leveraging uh, external learning record stores to both manage and record content usage and, and uh, learning uh, information. Uh, data and metrics was very, very exciting. So uh, I don't think we are on the bleeding edge with those types of technologies anymore. It's certainly leading edge. Uh, we're in that kind of early adopter. Uh, soon to become an early majority. And uh, for those of you that are companies that aren't necessarily leaders in the innovation space, but, but definitely 
um, fall in line with the early adopter crowd, uh, now is the time to start looking at those types of things, content management, content strategy, and so on and so forth. And that actually kind of leads me to my wraparound, which would be come April 9th, um, I'm going to be at the ATD uh, Houston Learning Technology uh, Conference, and I'm so excited because the Learning Technologies community of practice at ATD uh, National has been so great to me, and it's excellent to be able to reach out to the individual chapters. I'm super excited. I know that Houston's got a very, very uh, energetic and uh, vibrant community of training professionals, and I'm looking forward to reaching out and meeting many others, and uh, I definitely got to uh, bring Linda a gift for, <laughs> for uh, remembering all my six Ps there. So uh, I'm going to be there April 9th, and I'm going to be talking about mastering mobile learning, but also things related to it adaptive learning content strategy and, and so on. So uh, very excited about that event and uh, looking forward to at least getting out of some of the cold here because being in Illinois right now, it's about 20 degrees and pretty frigid. Oh, wow. <laughs> Only 20 oh. degrees, Ken? Come on. Right around there. It was like negative 11 yesterday. So oh, we're in wow. Illinois right now. So, Ken, did any questions come through on the page that we need to go back through and respond to? No, we have uh, we got everything covered. We're good. All right, great, Chad. I appreciate you bringing up those new um, concepts: the conceptual learning, the adaptive learning, the personal learning. Well, my company is not so much an early adapter, but we really want to be. So we'll just you know grab hold of your coattails and follow you in. And I know there are many other companies like that. They want to take the step, but they hesitate to see how long it's going to take to actually go through and become productive. So this is very encouraging to have this group online today to make a discussion about what they learned at the ATD Tech Knowledge 2015 and what is in our future. So is there anything else that we need to discuss or bring up before we close this afternoon? Well, again, we appreciate you being here. Don't forget about the conference April the 9th. If you register now, there is an early bird prize, so you'll get a great discount. Just go to our website, www.tdhouston.org. You'll see the speakers that we have there, the location, and get more information about Chad. Thank you so much for spending your hour with us today. We appreciate it, and we're looking forward to seeing you in person at one of the ATD meetings. Thank you, and goodbye.